What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Totally Inspired with me, your girl Siwa Duve. I'd like to start off by thanking everybody that's been watching my videos, liking and commenting. And above all, I'd like to thank everyone that has subscribed. Please, if you have not subscribed, please make sure that you do subscribe. I see that I do have people viewing the videos, but you just need to also subscribe. And remember to hit the notification bell as well because um, when I upload something new, you are going to be able to know that there is a new video. As you can see from today's topic, we are talking about signs that a marriage is heading for divorce. The reason why I chose this topic is that we are in the month of February, which is the month of love. And um, I thought it was going to be something very relevant and fitting for us to talk about relationships. I managed to get the input of four ladies who've actually been through divorce and they share their experience in, you know, in their journey. Some of the signs that they saw, um, you know, building up to their um, eventual divorce. So it's always good to hear from somebody that has experienced something because they're the most qualified people to help us understand, you know, the steps or the journey that one goes through or what, what one can expect or the feelings that they experienced during the time that they went through something. So uh, in this episode, we are going to be looking at some of the signs to look out for that will give you red flags or indications that your marriage is headed for divorce. Just as we did in our last coffee chat, we are going to read messages from women who I will share with you. I will not necessarily give you their names, uh, but you know, share their experiences with you. So um, let's go. I mean, um, we have lady number one whom I'm going to read um, their input for you and then we can hear more about the signs that they experience. All right, so lady number one says, one of the signs is constantly addressing the same issue over and over with no better results, no improvement. And then she says that another point is prolonged silent treatment, which escalates from one week, two weeks, and even more. And then thirdly, she talks about intimacy doesn't feature anywhere. Couples become like a brother and sister where there is no more touching in any way. According to lady number one, it's very interesting. I mean, she says here, when somebody continuously addresses the same issue and doesn't stop um, talking about it, I think what she means here is bringing up old issues as well, I think from what she's saying and then repeatedly and continuously talking about something. And maybe you on your side think that, well, we're over this, we spoke about this, but this person continuously brings it up. So she says that is a sign that your marriage is really in the danger of uh, going for a divorce. Another point is that the silent treatment. I mean, if you're not going to be talking to one another in a relationship, that's really a sign that should worry you. If you can comfortably spend two weeks or more not engaging or having a conversation, it's just a sign that the relationship is becoming toxic or is already toxic. Why would you spend time so long without talking to somebody, you know, that you're sharing a bed with? So that's the other point that she raises. And another one is the issue of intimacy. I mean, the whole idea of a marriage is for people to be intimate with one another. And here what she's saying is that when you suddenly see that you are going for periods, like a long period of time without intimacy, or that is a sign that there is a problem in your marriage. Those are very interesting points that lady number one raises and there are indications that you know the relationship is really degenerating and you quickly need to act on it so that things don't spiral out of control so thank you for that contribution and i hope somebody is being helped if you are going through those any of those signs uh, lady number one is saying watch out for those because she's been through it and eventually her marriage came to an end now let's go to lady number two lady number two tells us here divorce is as a result of a buildup of unresolved issues that lead to couples not being able to relate to one another at times divorce has little to do with the fact that they don't love one another but they actually have fallen out of love for a number of reasons that's very interesting she says that it's not a result of that you don't love each other and she also talks about issues building up and for me what that means is when 
there are issues they need to be addressed and so that they don't pile up to a point that you find yourselves as a couple actually having outbursts or one of you has an outburst because you've been keeping things for very long so here i have points number one when the couple is unable to communicate with one another number two when there is ongoing conflict even over minor issues number three when they no longer spend time together and then number four when no one is willing to compromise number five when there's third parties involved that is extramarital affairs and interference by families number six couples start to plan apart which leads to financial problems number seven they no longer have common vision and interest number eight when there's emotional and physical abuse number nine acts of disrespect to another person number 10 when there is no more intimacy that is also coming in again so this is clearly something that is actually a red flag and an indicator that here our marriage is getting to a point where we need to resolve things and make sure that we save it from ending in divorce number 11 when the marriage no longer honors god and he's not at the center of the marriage so those are the points that lady number two has shared i'll just pick a few points here and I, I i'll i'll look at the one when she talks about couples planning apart and she makes reference to financial planning in particular and financial problems i know a lot of times people will assume that divorce is caused by infidelity but i was reading somewhere that actually it is the financial aspects of a marriage that rank as the number one reason for why couples divorce so money is an important thing and then she addresses the issue of emotional and physical abuse now that is something that really raises concerns for a lot of people including our government and our society in general because in south africa for example um there's a lot of incidents of femicide or issues of um, gender-based violence where you see that every single day at least a woman is killed every eight hours in south africa that and that is according to the stats that are out there you know where they are reporting the frequency of deaths that occur as a result of women being killed by their intimate partners and these are stats that are out there some people even say it could actually be more than that but a death of a woman is one too many and we know that there are so many cases of women that are being reported to being abused and killed by their husbands and their intimate partners so lady number two says if you are experiencing emotional and physical abuse it is important that you act on this um before it's too late and in most cases people feel that once that starts happening the chances of you saving your marriage are really slim or, or the chances of you having a healthy relationship are really slim but, and now we'll move on to lady number three she didn't send um a message and but i wrote down some notes based on the voice note and i'm just going to be reading through them but maybe as a start i just want to you know talk about how she mentioned the fact that she kind of knew um from the time that things were starting to deteriorate that their marriage was not in a good place and she could potentially see that um that the marriage would be heading for divorce but she chose to ignore the signs until it got to a point where there was no turning back and the relationship actually ended in divorce and it's very interesting because uh, lady number three is uh, one of those people whose marriage you know um started to you know deteriorate they started to dissolve their marriage during the COVID pandemic and like right in, in 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 lockdown so she says that they separated in um, April of 2020 but let's listen to the points that lady number three raises so she talked about the fact that her husband started being disrespectful you know speaking to her anyhow and saying things the way he chose to say them never really gave it some thought or um, you know addressed her in a respectful manner secondly she says that their values started to change um, whereby when they got married they shared the same values they had the same vision but along the way she could see now that they had different values altogether completely different and they didn't have you know the same priorities in life and didn't share the same vision the other point that she raised is the issue of communication i think communication has been raised by the other ladies she says that communication started being a problem they were just not able to engage in a way that was healthy and it was becoming a problem the other point that she 
she raised is that the way he started to talk initially when they were still good the relationship was still okay um it was a matter of him always talking about we you know we need to do this we need to buy this but suddenly it changed from we to i so he started making plans or or looking at things from an individual perspective not looking at the two of them um as one another point that she raised was the fact that he would plan events separately so they were used to going on holiday as family they would even plan leave together but as time went on she realized that he started planning his own leave on his own without necessarily including her or letting her know you know including her in the plans to say let's um, take leave on such and such a time so that they could be uh, on a break together he would literally like tell her on the morning that he's going on leave or a day before and then he would say that he's going to visit his mom or you know make plans that don't include her at all another point that she she made is that he would often always want to be with the family when things were okay but suddenly he would make plans and say you know uh, i feel tired i feel exhausted i need time out and he was taking time out on his own without including the family in those plans so that's another signal that lady number three raises and then she says um they lost trust for one another at least she lost trust for him because uh, she says that uh, you know like how the other ladies uh, also mentioned the fact that when there is infidelity or there's a third party involved in her case she says um trust became an issue after she found out that he was having extramarital affairs and in those extramarital affairs um he was he even went as far as having children and obviously trust was eroded in that case another point and which is the, the the last point is that um she started you know realizing that he was starting to abuse her emotionally physically and mentally and she even says that she got to her, she was ignoring the signs she was choosing to brush it aside but this was really something that was a problem in the marriage to a point that he would even speak negatively about the way she looked or the way she dressed which would not have a good effect on her so there was emotional abuse there there was mental abuse and there was physical abuse and the, the, the sad thing is that she says that she she initially chose to ignore that as a sign that the marriage was in trouble but it went on until they got to a point where it, it taught dissolved so that's lady number three's pointers with regards to things that you need to look out for to see that your marriage is heading for divorce for lady number four just raised one point and this obviously is based on her experience she has very a very simple uh, sign that she says ladies need to look out for for her she says that the minute you start seeing family meetings continuously being held to try and resolve your issues then you know that um your marriage is heading for divorce she says that in her case they were always having family meetings between her family and his family her people and, and his people always talking about issues in their marriage and this meetings were continuously happening and no solutions were coming in sight and that for her was actually a sign that she thinks that any woman that is experiencing this should actually be concerned and really consider saving her marriage if you still want to make it work once you see this as a sign that's happening you really need to find ways in which you can work around ensuring that you save your marriage but for now we will leave it here and maybe you can actually start looking and taking stock of what you are seeing in your marriage and maybe see if there are any of these red flags that these ladies have so generously and kindly shared with us to look out for i hope you found this helpful this may not necessarily be for you it could be for a friend that you know who could be going through some of the things and has in confidence shared some of the things that you're observing in this video please make sure you share this video with her um, because we're here to help one another as sisters we're here to help one another as women and not to watch another sister walking into a ditch whilst we have this information it's always encouraging when you hear stories from other people because it helps you to see that you're not losing your mind helps you to see things from another perspective i hope you found this in interesting and that you'll put this information to good use but for now we'll end it here until next time please do keep inspiring remember to subscribe share and comment as well as like mm -hmm.